I'm Alex from Android Central, and this is the OnePlus Nord. It's supposed to be about the company returning to its roots, attempting to deliver, in its own words, pretty much everything you could want at a pretty good price. Think a modern take on something like the OnePlus One or OnePlus X from the brand's early days. So the Nord is a phone, but it's also a brand. It's been built as a small, plucky upstart team within a team at OnePlus. The welcome letter in the box has a message from that team, who are pictured on the inside, and will be familiar faces if you followed the OnePlus documentary series, charting Nord's ups and downs over the past six months. This kind of thing's pretty unusual in the smartphone industry. Most large brands aren't so keen to show their customer base how the proverbial sausage is made. Ultimately though, once you've discarded the marketing and the beautiful packaging and the Instagram stories, Nord's success will depend on the phone itself. After countless leaks and sneak peeks in recent days, you might already feel quite well acquainted with the design of this device. I've been using the OnePlus Nord in its trademark blue bobble colour for the past week, and the phone definitely feels like a departure from the curvy OnePlus Pro models I've gotten to know over the past year. While it's true OnePlus has flip-flopped on design over the years, the Nord nonetheless feels like something different. There's a completely flat display and a rounded glass back with an ever so slight pearlescent sheen to it. The outer frame is plastic with a metallic effect, while the buttons and alert sliders are metal. And the overall package is around the same physical size as the OnePlus 8, so not exactly a big phone, but not particularly small either. The display is a Full HD Plus Fluid AMOLED panel with in-screen fingerprint and a hole-punch cutout for standard and ultra-wide selfies. First impressions are the screen is bright, vibrant and of course smooth thanks to its 90Hz refresh rate. Bezels are uniform except for a very small chin area down below, and I'm actually not too bothered by the double width camera cutout, which is fairly unobtrusive most of the time. The Nord is the first OnePlus phone to not use a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 series processor. Instead, Qualcomm's mid-tier flagship offering, the Snapdragon 765G, runs the show here, bringing with it 5G connectivity for added future-proofing. Depending on how much you spend, you'll either get 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage for £379, or 12 plus 256 for 469 In India, there'll also be a 6 plus 64 gig version of the Nord that's even more competitively priced. Meanwhile, the battery clocks in at an ample 4,150 mAh, equipped with the same Warp Charge 30T technology found in OnePlus's flagship phones. However, as you might expect, there is no wireless charging. We'll get more into performance in our full review, but suffice to say, it looks, feels, and performs very much like a OnePlus phone, which is to say it's pretty snappy. That's in large part thanks to OnePlus's Oxygen OS 10.5 software, which brings the same core experience of the OnePlus 8 series to the Nord. We've been enjoying this on OnePlus phones for years now, a stock Android aesthetic, fast performance, and plenty of thoughtful add-ons like Zen Mode. The only real difference in the software of the Nord is the move to Google's phone dialer app as standard, as well as Android Messages as the default texting app. So now you get features like spam detection and RCS messaging right out of the box. The Nord boasts a total of six cameras, four on the back and two on the front. The front pair lets you take wider angle selfies up to 105 degrees to fit in more scenery or friends. Meanwhile, around the back, the star sensor is Sony's IMX586 behind an f1.75 lens with optical stabilization. If that sounds familiar, it's because it's ripped straight from the OnePlus 8, as well as the 7 Pro and 7T Pro last year. So it's a known combination which, paired with OnePlus's software, should deliver great shots in both daylight and low light, especially for its price. The other sensors are a bit of a wild card. There's an 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel depth sensing camera to help with portraits, and that most dubious of extra smartphone cameras, the 2 megapixel macro. So we'll have to wait for our full review before we can tell you how these extra cameras perform. So the branding here is arguably just as important, if not more so, than the actual phone. Imagine if this thing had shipped largely free from the social media pomp and ceremony of the past few weeks as simply the OnePlus 8 Lite, or something equally uninspired. It's hard to imagine this level of hype for a phone with that name. Time will tell whether OnePlus has been able to thread the needle and deliver a really compelling phone at what seems to be some seriously competitive price points. Stay tuned for our full review to find out, and be sure to subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube so you don't miss our future coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.